Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to share this week's update on the COVID-19 pandemic for the Appalachian Highlands, Tennessee and Virginia for August 30th, 2020. And as I've pointed out before, if you look at the growth rate in different places in the country, in different places around the world, you see that there's very different patterns. There's still countries where it's growing very rapidly, like South Africa, countries where it's still increasing, like Brazil, countries where it appears to be slowing down a little bit like the United States, and then many countries where it has leveled off, as we've seen in Belgium. And importantly, we've seen this, these are the four most impacted countries in Europe in terms of deaths per million. We see this same pattern. There's still increased deaths but it's a very, very slow growth rate. And we're seeing the same thing in the United States and the four most impacted states. So we refer to this as a mature pandemic. And in terms of week to week growth rate, what we're seeing in Belgium and other countries like that is it's dropping down to where there's very few uh, additional deaths every week. This is what a mature pandemic would look like. I've pointed out before, this is where the U.S. is. It's slowing down, but it's still uh, not at zero or low growth, as we've seen in the European countries. Uh, but it is coming down. So let's take a look at Virginia. In Virginia, we've seen this drop in growth rate as well. Pretty much where the U.S. is leveling off somewhere around 5%. In terms of the number of cases in Virginia, we saw a rise in daily number of cases and it fell and it grew again. And while it seems to be leveling off, it's important to point out that these new cases that even we're seeing today are more than we've seen at virtually any time during the epidemic in Virginia. If you look at deaths in Virginia, it's actually quite an interesting pattern. It's almost like watching a ball bouncing down the street. The numbers went up, came down, went back up, came down, up, down, up, down. And I think what's happening there is we're starting to see the spread uh, geographically. It starts in the urban areas and then spreads out. And you can certainly see this if you compare the total number of cases in Virginia versus cases in the past two weeks. This is the total number of cases as of August 26th. And now I'm going to superimpose on it cases in the past two weeks. And you can begin to see it spreading into new areas, particularly in the rural areas and the southern parts of the state. In terms of Tennessee, we have seen a slowing of the growth rate, but it seems to be leveling off a little bit higher than Virginia in the 10 to 15% range, suggesting that the pandemic is probably earlier in Tennessee. If you look at the total number of cases, again, slow growth and then rapid increase in number of cases, and then it levels off a little bit, but again, important to point out that we're still seeing a lot of new cases and if you look at deaths, uh, the death rate has been growing fairly consistently over time. And we're seeing as many daily deaths now as we've seen at any time. And if you wonder about the discrepancy between cases and deaths, I mean, there's some explanations, but I think the, most sim the simplest explanations were simply not testing as much as we were before. If you look at ca total cases in Tennessee, in cases in the past two weeks. This is all of the cases in the history of Tennessee, and you can see them clustered in the peri-urban areas. But if you superimpose on it now, what's happened in the past two weeks, you can certainly see spreading into the more rural areas. And this explains why the growth rate continues to be fairly high in Tennessee, because there are new communities that are being impacted. Uh, if you look at the Appalachian Highlands in terms of hospitalizations in red and new cases in blue, you see a very odd pattern. You see that the hospitalizations continue to go up, but cases continue to go down. For the past month or so, we've had less and less cases. Well, this could mean that people are simply sicker, more hospitalizations for fewer cases. It could be that the hospitalizations reflect cases that occurred more than a month ago, but I think this is probably the best evidence that we have that we're simply not testing as much. If you don't test, you don't find cases, but it doesn't change hospitalizations and it doesn't change deaths. If you look at the total number of confirmed cases in the Appalachian Highlands, again, you see this fairly consistent growth rate such that we've now had 34,000 cases. It grew about almost 9% in the past week. Remember that number, I'll come back to it in a second. If you look at deaths, again, the same kind of pattern, perhaps a little bit steeper. 
such that we've now had 541 deaths and it's grown 11%. So a faster growth rate in deaths and in cases, again, reminds us that we're probably not testing as much. And let me take a moment here and make a comment to anyone who thinks that this pandemic isn't serious. I want you to think about 500 deaths, 500 deaths in our region alone because of this pandemic. What we're seeing in the Appalachian Highlands, again, sort of mirrors Tennessee. It's not come down quite as much as we'd like to see um, in, in, but it's, it's hopefully coming down. Tennessee's reported 150,000 cases, 1,725 deaths. Virginia's had 120,000 cases, 2,500 deaths. Our regions had 34,000 cases, 541 deaths. Not to say the same thing over and over again, but if you look at Tennessee, about 1.1% of the known cases have died. In Virginia, it's almost twice as high. That's not because Virginia's healthcare is worse. It's not because Virginia's population is more vulnerable. It's probably because they're simply not testing as much and the Appalachian Highlands fall somewhere in between. So what we're seeing in Tennessee and the Appalachian Highlands especially. We hope we're seeing a slowing of the growth rate, but we're not down yet. This is still a major issue. It's still killing a lot of people. It's still having a lot of hospitalizations. This is not the time to let up on the things that we know work. This is the time to continue to take it seriously. There's a great deal more information about COVID-19 on our College of Public Health website. If you go and click on this icon, you can find a variety of videos uh, on, on issues related to COVID-19. If you have anyone you'd like to, that, know, that you know would like to be added to our mailing list, please let Jan Stork know. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know if there's any topics you'd like to see us cover, or if there's anything that I say that doesn't make sense to you or that you disagree with, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.